the last few weeks have led us up to this lesson that we're on today. And what we're beginning to talk about, well, let me back up. We have talked about the Old Testament prophecies about Jesus and some of the New Testament prophecies about Jesus and where Jesus fulfilled it. We have talked about the 400 years between the Old Testament and the New Testament and what was going on there and the way that the Jews, um, they dropped the ball because that was a great time for them to dig in. Some good things came out of it, like the Septuagint, but for the most part, they didn't take that time to dig in when they could have. Then we talked about the fact that John the Baptist is Elijah. Jesus flat out said that. Even though John the Baptist didn't recognize that, that may have been his humanity and his mistake. Well, now we're moving into talking about where Jesus told us about prophecies, about things that haven't even happened yet. And after that, we're going to stay in end times prophecy for quite a while. Um, that's where the Holy Spirit is leading us. So the bulk of where Jesus tells us about what is coming is in Matthew 24. We are going to be spending a few days at the very least in Matthew 24. I don't know. We'll just kind of see how the Holy Spirit leads. So if you'll turn in your Bible with me to Matthew 24, we're starting right at verse 1. And it says, Jesus left the temple and was going away when his disciples came to point out to him the buildings of the temple. So imagine this in your head. This is just an ordinary, regular day to these disciples. They are, um, they're leaving the temple, and as they're walking away, the disciples are saying, hey, look at this, look at that, isn't that cool? And this is how Jesus responds to that. I feel like I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. But he answered them, and this is Jesus talking. You see all these things, do you not? Truly I say to you, there will not be left one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. He is saying this temple is going to be thrown down. This temple is going to be destroyed. Later, it says, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Now they already know, Jesus has already established that he's going to come back. He's going to leave. He's going to come back. And Jesus answered them, see that no one leads you astray. And I'm feeling led. I didn't plan on this, but I am feeling led to stop right there. See that no one leads you astray. That phrase right there is very telling for our day and age. See that no one leads you astray. We have this Bible. The Jewish people had the Old Testament, and when they could have dug in, they didn't. And as a result of that, they didn't see that John the Baptist was Elijah. They didn't see that the Messiah had come. They didn't see it. We're being told, see that no one leads you astray. Our society is working extremely hard to lead us astray and try and convince us that what is true is not really true. We have the truth in this Bible. We need to cling to that. Verse four, um, I'm sorry, verse five. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and they will lead many away. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place. But the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of the birth pains. Okay, so let's stop and think this through. When we know that the news is telling us that there's wars coming, that there's rumors of wars, that there's famine, that there's earthquakes in various places. Are we supposed to get all upset about it? No, we're supposed to say, yep, the Bible told us this. Yep, we're not gonna be upset about this. This is no surprise. Why? Because Jesus told us about it in Matthew 24. See that no one leads you astray. 
make sure you know what this Bible says. And the best way to learn what it says is to get a notebook out and a pencil and read it, write it down, think about it through your day so that you learn it. Have a wonderful day. God bless and keep walking the walk.